Hello and welcome back to another episode of 5 Minute Materials, a show where we demystify every node in the Unreal Engine Material Graph. Today we're going to be talking about absolute world position. So, let's jump straight into it. If we were to grab a texture, and we're going to put that into the base color and the emissive just because, and we were to get the world position, which comes up as absolute world position, and we mask it in the R and the G being the X and the Y. We're not worried about the up and down. Uh, and then we chuck that in to our texture sample. Then what we notice straight away is it looks gray at first, but if we zoom really far in, really far in, you can see that that is our texture <laughs> right there. And because we're using the world coordinates to do this, each tile of this texture is one unreal unit. So one centimeter in real life units. This is kind of useless until we divide this by a number. If you're not too sure what dividing this is going to do, check out my math tutorial right here. That'll set you up for the rest of this. So if we grab this and we divide it by 100, then every 100 units, one meter, is going to be a tile of this. So you can see each one of these is one meter. Very, very cool. And so likewise, if I was to divide this by 1000, the texture would be even bigger. Now you might be thinking, okay, what's so special about this? You'll notice that when I move this cube around, the texture itself doesn't actually move, at least the upwards facing one. Because we're using the X and the Y coordinates to essentially project this texture from above, anything that's on the side sort of gets stretched out really funky. So if we were to turn this on its side, it would be less stretched and so on and so forth. So now you're probably thinking, okay, this texture is bananas. What can I do with it? Well, something that I use it for, as you can see in my landscape, I have these sort of different colored patches of grass. We've got darker green here and a sort of yellower, lighter green here. And the way that gets done is I take a cloud noise. Uh, I'm using the red channel of this packed cloud noise. We divide the UV by 26,000 in the, the R and the G positions. And so then after I've applied contrast to it, that goes into the alpha of a lerp, which lerps between two different colors. Okay, so if we go back, look at the landscape, you can see if I had set it to be red, then it would be red where the cloud noise is white and green where it is black. And if you were using, you know, a texture that tiled about this big, this would overlay on top of that and make the tiling a lot less noticeable. Now, another cute little trick that I use this for is in my leaf material, we get the absolute world position. We mask it in the B, which is the Z axis, the up and down. And then we run that through a sine wave and the sine's period is set to 1,200. So every 1,200 centimeters, it will do a cycle from zero up to one down to negative one up to one and then we divide that by a number to make it uh, like softer and then we plug that into a lerp and so if we take these oak leaves for example and i make the color completely different you can see there is this sort of banding that happens in the trees and with that dividing variable you can change the sort of softness of the uh of the banding when you make this you know more subtle you can get some really nice variation in the color of your, your leaves. And you can also see down here, I do the same thing with these flowers. So as the flowers go up further, they turn red. And then as they go up even further, they turn yellow again. So this is just an easy way of kind of breaking up the colors of your scene a little, a little more in a nice stylized and smooth way. So one of the best ways to visualize what this node's actually doing is to put it at the world origin and just plug the absolute world position node straight into the base color of the material. And as you can see, this just kind of looks like a, a, a printer ink cartridge packet. But if we take a closer look, you'll actually see what's going on. Now you're probably familiar with this widget here, which has the X, Y, and Z coordinates. 
So based on this, if we take a look at the red direction, which is X, you'll see that all the colors on this side of the cube have red in them. We have magenta, which is made of red and blue. We have red, which is made of red. We have yellow, which is made of red and green. And we have white, which is made of all three primary colors. If we take a look on the green side, which is the Y direction, we have cyan, white, yellow, and green, which all have green in them. And if we have a look at the blue direction or the Z direction, we have cyan, we have blue, we have magenta and white, which all contain blue as well. And then in this desolate corner over here, everything is in the negative. So it's just, it's very dark. So if we were to divide the absolute world position by a thousand, then we'll get a nice smooth gradient, which if we're looking at the green direction, the Y direction, then if this middle point is Y zero, because we're dividing by a thousand, then this gradient won't end until a thousand units later, which is about here. And so that is why dividing the absolute world position will make your textures appear larger if you're using it in the UV slot for your textures. And so this kind of explains to us what this node is actually returning. So it can kind of be difficult to wrap your head around, but if you were to put your finger on any object in the world at any position, the absolute world position would be telling you these are the exact coordinates of that position. So that's the world position node, all done and dusted. It can be used to project textures onto objects so that if you have multiple objects that need to share the same tiling, um, if I had a cliff and another cliff with a different model or, you know, same model, but different rotation, but they both had a grass texture on top, which were projected using the X, Y coordinates, then however I laid those two objects over each other, those textures would always match. They'd have no seams. They'd always line up with each other. You can also use it for some really nice color variations, like I explained before, using the sine wave. And it's also used in a quadrillion other shader techniques, but these are the very basics. Th these are, this is that one weird trick that you need to know. Um, doctors hate him. As always, if you found this educational or entertaining, please leave this comment, a video or like, and join our subscribe in the Discord below. So with that, I say goodbye, goodbye.